Hello, I'm here to talk to you about ruthenium. Hang tight, because at the, after this short uh, description of ruthenium, I am going to do some actual really cool experiments with real ruthenium metal. Unlike last video, where I just had a hunk of ruthenium and I dunked it in a bunch of different acids and showed that nothing happened, in this video I'm going to actually get it to react with something, and I'm going to actually do some cool experiments with it in aqueous solution. Specifically, I'm going to um, explore its various oxidation states and the complexes that it forms in those oxidation states. But first, what about ruthenium? So, ruthenium um, is a platinum group metal, which means that it's, it's pretty rare. Um, it's pretty dense, too, so one theory is that a lot of the ruthenium kind of just sunk to the middle of the earth while the, um, the crust was molten, and so not a lot of it is left in the crust. But some is, and it's been mined, um, and, and people have found many applications for ruthenium. One application is in catalysis. It turns out the platinum group metals are actually pretty good catalysts for all sorts of things. One of those things is um, in f uh, fully oxidizing um, carbon monoxide, say, and other uh, and and um, nitrogen oxides. Well, oxidizing carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide and actually um, separating the nitrogen oxides into nitrogen and oxygen. So in catalytic converters in cars, you'll find many platinum group metals. Um, so that the emissions from the cars aren't as bad for the atmosphere and for people and animals. Um, ruthenium is also very wear resistant. It resists at any oxidation at room temperature, even by super strong acids that can react with other metals such as gold. Um, it will not do anything in aqua regia. So, it's used because of all the, of, of this lack of resistance in um, electrical contacts where it's really important that uh, there's no tarnishing. Ruthenium is used in many other things, but I want to get to the really cool experiments because there's some, I, I play around with, with some ruthenium in solution. So, first of all, how do I get ruthenium into solution if it resists attack by acids and such? Well, in my last video, I tried putting it in bleach and nothing happened. Well, it turns out that it'll only be, get oxidized if it's in alkaline bleach. And so in this video, I actually successfully get into the solution and do experiments with it. But first, I'm going to show you some ruthenium. Now, this is the same piece of, of ruthenium I had in the previous video. But this time, it's got some really nice, you can really see some crystalline structure. Because I've etched it with the, um, with the bleach. Um, I've gotten some of it into solution. So this is actually a little bit less ruthenium than was in the previous video. All right, let's get down to the lab. My first step in doing this ruthenium experiment is getting the ruthenium into solution. This is a solution of 5% sodium hypochlorite bleach and sodium hydroxide, so it's alkaline. There is the ruthenium metal. You see it's a very nice bead of ruthenium. Now I'm going to put the ruthenium into the solution and it's going to be oxidized to the plus 6 oxidation state or the plus 7 oxidation state. The plus 6 oxidation state um, in the plus 6 oxidation state is in the form of the ruthenate ion in the plus 7 the perruthenate. At room temperature this reaction proceeds very slowly so I'm going to start heating it up. But already, even without heating, you can see a little bit of a red around the ruthenium. That's a mixture of ruthenate and perruthenate. As the ruthenium continues to react, you see the solution gets quite a bit darker. It ends up kind of a muddy brown color. This is a mixture of the dirt, dirty green perruthenate and the bright orange red ruthenate. To get pure ruthenate, I remove the ruthenium from the solution and I um, haven't done that yet, and I let the solution sit out for a few hours. Now, because the solution is alkaline, there are plenty of OH groups running around, and the perruthenate will oxidize the um, OH groups, reducing itself 
and forming ruthenate. So if you let the solution sit out for a while in alkaline solution, you're going to get pure ruthenate and the solution will turn a nice orange color like this. So this is pure ruthenate. Now I'm going to add a couple drops of a saturated solution of sodium persulfate. A persulfate is a very strong oxidizer and it is going to oxidize the ruthenate all the way up to pure to perruthenate. So then you're going to have a solution of pure perruthenate. So here I am adding the persulfate solution. And already you can see a distinct color change. I'm shaking it up a little bit and you can see the color is, has definitely changed and now the solution proceeds and gets darker and darker. Once it's this kind of inky brown black color, it's pure peruthenate. So here is this peruthenate solution. Now, when I begin to heat it with a propane torch, you see yet another color change happen. It doesn't revert back to the original orange, but the solution does get lighter. But you see the top layer is slowly turning this kind of lighter yellow color, and the rest of the test tube is soon to follow. Well, what is happening here? I'm not 100% sure, but here is my best theory. I haven't been able to look up the reduction potential of uh, ruthenium tetroxide online, but because persulfate is such a strong yet slow oxidizer, I think that the persulfate oxidizes the ruthenate to peruthenate and then continues to oxidize the peruthenate to ruthenium tetroxide which features ruthenium in the 8 plus oxidation state. Quite an unusual oxidation state for a for an element, for a single element. Um, especially given that it isn't in any kind of fancy complex. So this is the first time that I have gotten to the 8 plus oxidation state in any one of my videos. And I'm not 100% sure it's the 8 plus oxidation state, but I can't think of any other good explanation. Notice there are also some small bubbles in the solution. Some of these may be oxygen gas from the, per, from the persulfate decomposing. However, as you, because you see that the color of the solution gets lighter, even lighter and almost clear whenever the bubbles, whenever there are bubbles, um, my guess is that this is actually ruthenium tetroxide gas coming out of solution in minute quantities. Even though these were minute quantities, I had my fan on full blast as ruthenium tetroxide is extremely poisonous. Alright, so I'm now going to acidify the solution with some hydrochloric acid. All right, it has been acidified. Looks like maybe it disproportionated. I'm not sure. I'm going to now add some zinc to reduce it. So you see the super dark red is probably the four plus oxidation state. Well, I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna add some zinc. Alright, so here's my ruthenium starting, my ruthenate starting solution. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to acidify the solution. Now the first bit of acid reacts with the um, hydroxide and just neutralizes the solution and then it starts to get acidic. When it gets acidic, the ruthenate disproportionates into perruthenate and a ruthenium chlorine chloride uh, complex which features ruthenium in the formal oxidation state of 4 plus. Now right now they're, um, it's a mixture of the two and so it just kind of looks this dull brown because of the dirty green color contributed by the peruthenate and the very very dark red color contributed by the ruthenium 4 plus complex. However what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a, a little spatula of zinc which is going to reduce the peruthenate, and so hopefully we'll get to we'll, we will be able to see a very dark red um, pure ruthenium four plus complex. 
Now it turned out that my solution was actually too concentrated to really see the dark red color. Right now it's pretty much dark red if it is diluted, and I know this from, from uh, other experiments I, I've done with ruthenium. Now, what, I, what happens is the ruthenium, or rather is the zinc, reduces the ruthenium all the way down to the 2 plus oxidation state, which is a much lighter blue color, and that you can see in my test tube. So I'm going to skip to that, and then I reoxidize the ruthenium back up to the 3 plus and 4 plus oxidation states in a much more diluted solution where you can see the beautiful colors. So here's ruthenium in the 2 plus oxidation state. I've diluted the solution a little, but it's still pretty dark, even though the 2 plus oxidation state is a pretty light color. It also didn't help that zinc particles were in the solution, uh, making the solution somewhat turbid. Anyway, this is the 2 plus oxidation state. Then I added a few drops of a concentrated solution of ammonium persulfate, which would reoxidize the 2 plus oxidation state. It immediately goes up to this kind of whitish color, which is whitish, very light orange color, which is the 3 plus oxidation state. Now, what I found is that the oxidation power of, oxidizing power of persulfate is very closely dependent on the temperature of the solution. When I begin heating the solution with a torch, then the, uh, it seems like the, the uh, persulfate suddenly gets more oxidizing power because the, it goes beyond the 3 plus oxidation state and the, because the, sol the solution starts to gain a much darker yellow and kind of orange color. Now compare this yellow orange with the yellow orange of the ruthenate. They're very different. This one is much darker because this is a much more dilute solution and yet it is even darker than the ruthenate. This is ruthenium 4 plus. Now I continue heating this solution with the propane torch for a while and for a while the solution gets even darker. And one thing I forgot to mention is that there's still zinc in the solution. So the persulfate and the zinc are kind of fighting. One is trying to reduce and one is trying to oxidize. But the higher the temperature, it seems the persulfate is a stronger oxidizer and the persulfate ends up winning. Suddenly, as I continue to heat it, you see that the color suddenly changes back to white. Now this is an even lighter white than the 3 plus oxidation state. And what I'm quite confident this is, is the 8 plus oxidation state. Well, what does that mean? That's ruthenium tetroxide. So we've gotten back to ruthenium tetroxide. Well, why is the solution so light? Because it's much more dilute than my previous ruthenium tetroxide solution, and most of the ruthenium tetroxide has by now escaped as a gas. So there we go. We've now observed all of the relatively easily accessible oxidation states of ruthenium.